On this episode of The Day in the Life of an Artist, Funk Studios Control the Cool has the wonderful owner of Lotus Soul Yoga, Hadia Harrison. Welcome. Thank you for having me. No problem, no problem. So give us a little background about yourself and why you decided to pursue yoga. Okay, so it was around 2016. I suffered, uh, well, I'll go back. I started yoga about five years ago, back in 2013, 2013, yeah. Um, I had suffered a traumatic miscarriage and I was looking for alternative methods to heal. Um, I didn't want to do any type of um, medical intervention, like take pills. I was looking for an alternative way. And I saw yoga. I went into a yoga studio. My husband had purchased a, a, a Groupon for a hot yoga session at a big home yoga studio. I went, I loved it, and I continued on with the practice. And so a traumatic event turned into something that um, I healed from. And I'm able now to share the gift of healing through yoga to other people. Uh, nice. And I have to say congratulations because you just you opened in January, correct? Yes, we opened up January 2nd, uh, this year, 2019. Uh, Thank you. That's really nice. And also, you know, big ups because Angie Martinez gave me a little shout out. You know, yeah, it's a little definitely. Shout out. <laughs> yes, Yesterday, Power 105.1. Point one, Angie Martinez, celebrating 28 days of Black-owned businesses. Thank you so much for the shout out. We appreciate you. Oh, Thank you. awesome, awesome. So what are the, some of the sessions that you teach and what are their benefits? Oh gosh, um, so we do anything from chair yoga here to uh, yoga for kids. We do meditation, we do power yoga. Yoga is a holistic approach um, to the mind, body, and spirit. So if you come in here and maybe you're stressed or you're anxious or you're worried, yoga can help with that. Yoga can eliminate toxins from the body. We do offer heated classes, so we do offer um, classes that are going to get the body going, get the sweat going, and a literal full body detox from the head to the toes. Um, yoga also reduces blood pressure. Yoga helps with insomnia. It helps you sleep better at night. Um, even yoga it increases flexibility, it, it promotes um, self-awareness, it also helps with um, anxiety, stress, it, uh, just everything. Uh, there's a cure for yoga, there's a cure, I mean, if you're having stiffness, soreness over the body, yoga helps with that. Um, so uh, yoga is a holistic approach, um, it helps you remain still in a chaotic world, it helps you to find some grounding in the spirit and it helps you to deal with everyday stresses of life. Oh, sweet, sweet. And since you've been doing yoga, you know, what are some of the challenges that you may experience as a teacher? Ooh, as a teacher, just um, getting students to be open to trying something different. Okay. You know, they're like yoga, what is, what is that? You know, we, when we look at yoga, when we see yoga, we don't see people who look like us. We don't see my body. We definitely don't see my skin color. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so we here we want to create a space where people are just comfortable with being themselves as they are. And that's the challenge is having people to let their hair down, having people to you know let their guard down. Um, but once they really get into it, they kind of like, okay, I see you, Heidi. You're not this <laughs> slender white woman. Not that I have anything against white people, you know, but. <laughs> You know, yoga is for everybody, you know, every, no matter the color, no matter the race, um, no matter the size, we have kids in here doing yoga. So the challenge initially is getting people in, okay. you know, because no one knows about yoga. They don't see, we're not represented on TV, you know, so they're like, oh, what's that? But when they come in, they feel at home. So we're, we're just thankful to have students who are able to, again, let their guard down and be not judgmental about themselves. You're the only woman of color that owns a yoga business in this, in this area? No, um, there's actually uh, three sisters, Melinda Williams, her mm -hmm. sister Lisa, um, and, uh, oh gosh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't need to, uh, they opened up One Nest Yoga in Broadway. Mm -hmm. They just opened up, I believe in October, a couple months before we opened. So if you're in the Broadway area, if you're in the Tri-State area, go check those sisters out. They have an amazing space. It's on Main Street. I don't know the address. 
but they're right in Robin. One next yoga. They just opened up, so. And so how do you build relationships with your students? Again, creating a welcome, a welcome and vibrant environment. From the time they walk into the door, I greet them by name. Um, you know, and, and I know them. We literally have personal conversations, and so we create an environment and a, a space where they're they're open, and we create a, a honesty. Uh, it's a mutual exchange, so they're honest with me. I'm honest with them, um, and so I have, we just give hugs. We love mm -hmm. each other. We we are not only are we a sisterhood. You know, we are a community that promotes unity and we promote togetherness, so I just love on them. I love my students. I love you all if you're watching this, if you're going to watch it. You know how much I love y'all. Yeah. So, you know. How, yeah. how important is meditation to your practice? Meditation is very important. It, it actually can start off the, each class with at least five minutes of a meditation. And it just, it just gets you to remove the inner chaos. Something you may have came into the studio with. Maybe you had a hard day at work. Maybe your spouse gave you a hard time. Maybe the kids are getting on your nerves. And so meditation is going to bring you to that inner focus, that inner awareness. It's going to bring you to a state of calmness. And I'll promote relaxation throughout the body. It'll prepare you for the yoga class. Yeah, but someone like me who's a gym rat, I guess that would definitely work. You know, just calm down, come yes. down from the high. You need a balance, you know, it's everything. It doesn't always have to be on go. You know, sometimes you just have to find that inner peace, that inner balance, and that quiet time, the quiet the mind. Where every day we we are just out there going, 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 going. When do you find that me time? When do you have that time to say, look, let me be still and let me enjoy my time with me. So that's what meditation does. It's meditation. Ah, I see, I see. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, what has helped you improve your classes since you started teaching? Just really listen to the community. Listen to their needs, their wants. Um, maybe a power yoga doesn't work for this time. Mm -hmm. Maybe not 12 o'clock in the afternoon, maybe 7 o'clock at night. So really just addressing the needs of the community. We have yoga in Espanol. We have a Spanish community out there that wants to do yoga. But again, they go into a yoga studio. No one looks like them. No one is speaking their language. Mm -hmm. And so we did provide yoga in Espanol, which we have at 7 p.m. on Tuesdays with Brady, who's amazing. She's AP Brady on Instagram. Follow her. She's amazing. But mm -hmm. So we just listen to the needs of the community and we address them. Yeah. How late do you usually go? What's the latest you ever went to um, Tuesdays and Thursdays we open up at 815 so we're here until 915. We're here as early as Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 6 a.m. And then on Tuesdays, Thursdays, um, 915 is our last. Well, we're here until 915. Oh, that's pretty cool because, you know, I, I'm not really into yoga. You know, I've never noticed that, but open until 9 seems like it's pretty cool. Yeah, because we have, we're in the community where people work, right? And yeah. some people, they can, in Linden, we're very next to the train station. We're two blocks away. And a lot of the community, they work or they commute to New York um, because we're very close to New York, too. We're about 25 to 30 minutes away. And because of that, they get in at 7 o'clock. You know, they have to put the kids to sleep or they have to make dinner or whatever the case may be. So we have that late night class in order to address that need for people who work in can be here at an earlier time. Well, that's definitely dope. That's definitely dope. Now, what style do you enjoy the most? You know, what, what particular session are I love I love power yoga, yeah. but I also love I love, I love beginners because I'm I'm always a beginner. I'm never a master. I tell my students all the time and they love that I tell them, look, I'm learning as I teach. And the beginner classes give me a chance to to humble myself, to go back to the beginning, to go back to where I came from. And so I love teaching beginners, I love teaching how to get in and out of the poses, I love teaching alignment. And I love teacher meditation. I also love power because there's a yin yang, right? Mm -hmm. Right. You have to have a balance. So I love to sweat. I love to give inspiration. So maybe a difficult pose that students think they can't get into. Mm -hmm. Once we give them that pep talk, once we say, "Look, you are enough. You are strong. You are brave. You are a warrior," and they're like, "Yes, I can do this." I love the feeling that I get from watching my students grow and flourish. So power yoga, mm -hmm. which I trained in power yoga okay. at High Yoga Revolution, again, an amazing studio right in Cranford. High 
hot book revolution uh, under Danielle Mojo and Sarah Rosenblatt. They are incredible. They have an incredible training program, yoga teacher training. Um, and so I have the power yoga and then I have just the beginner's yoga, which is a more slow paced flow. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a great balance. Nice, nice. Now for somebody with injuries, how would you respond to that? Ah, so we have chair yoga. For someone who maybe had hip replacement, knee replacement, it's hard for them to get up and down from the floor. We bring the floor up to them via the chair. We also have props, we have blocks. Um, I should have put a block up here. Uh, we also have straps. So we have different props that we can utilize. We offer modifications. So let's say you can't extend your arms out. Maybe you can cactus your arms out. Um, and so we offer props, modification, and again, chair yoga. You do the chair yoga has the same benefits as a regular yoga class, but you're just in a chair. Oh, nice. Now, how do you how do you stay up to date? Oh, again, we have several yoga studios in the area, so we peek in to see what they're doing. <laughs> you know, look what's going on over here. You know, what's going on? We look at the people who came before us because we don't have it all figured out. We're a new studio. So I look at the studios in the area that's doing it, and I gain inspiration from them. We are not in competition. We don't compete. We complete. Okay. And so, you know, that's how I stay up to date. I was like, oh, they did that. Oh, let me try it here. <laughs> and that's what makes it, yoga so beautiful, is that we all offer something different, but we are all one. And so we stay up to date by checking out, again, what the students are wanting. We have a, a event coming up, waist beads and wine, you know? Yeah. Completely not yoga, but that's what the students want. We had an open mic night here. Yes. Uh, yes. A couple of you yes. did, yes. which yes. is amazing. Thank you for that, for the video. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, we, we try to stay up to date with what's going on in the community, too. And um, again, feedback from the students is also how we stay up to date. And so how does yoga change your life? I mean, you have this nice aura, this nice glow. So. Definitely. So how does it really change your life? Uh, I used to go from zero to 100 real quick. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you would think it, but oh my gosh. It, it helps keep me humble. It helps keep me centered. It helps keep me grounded. When I want to curse somebody out, I'm like, don't read. I have to remember what I tell my <laughs> students, right? I can't be a hypocrite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, you come in, just breathe. And so always just remain in focus on the breath. Yoga, how? It created a space in me that I didn't know existed. This peaceful space. And I just want to share it with everybody. That's why I'm so oh, I'm so in love with yoga. And yoga is in me. Not only am I teaching yoga, yoga is a part of me. Um, because it has changed my life dramatically. It um, helps me really reduce stress. I get to teach it to my daughter. Okay. Um, and so that aspect of passing down this concept from mm -hmm. generation to generation. I mean, we pass down uh, wealth principles, we pass down, you know, a, a number of things, traditions, why not something that can help them grow from the inside out. So what is your yoga philosophy? Come as you are, and you are not, you you are not yoga. You know, you're not, uh, you're not the yoga poses, you know. Mm -hmm. You are the journey on your way through yoga. That's who you are and you are not. So I tell my students all the time, it's not about the poses, it's not about the postures, it's not how deep you can stretch. It's what did you learn along the way? How, how are you different? You came in heavy, are you lighter today? And so my philosophy is just show up. That's half the battle. Just okay. show up and be present. Yes, yes. Show up. So what has been your greatest influence? The people who came before me, um, I have again my, my instructors who, who, who trained me, Sarah and Danielle, they've been my influence and also uh, my yoga sisters, it was 13 of us we went to yoga teacher training with and they're each in their own right teaching yoga, they're head of classes, they are doing some amazing things and when I look at them and see how far they've come, we started all, we started together and to see them flourish and grow, they're my inspiration. Um, uh, so many of Vanessa, Ari, Brady, Emmy, Lauren, Joe. Oh my gosh, y'all gonna kill me. <laughs> I'll never forget you, you're always in my heart. Um, but it's just you all inspire me in so many ways. Bree, Bree teaches here. Um, and I just 
love you all so much. You are my source of inspiration. Thank you for what you do for to my life on a daily basis. The love, the love, I like that, mm -hmm. I like that. What do you feel is the most important skill a yoga instructor should have or should possess? Wow. Well, you have a body or you have the heart. If you have a heart and you have a love for yoga, I think that's good enough. Mm -hmm. I ask myself, what do I need to open up this yoga studio? And the spirit whispers, you need floors, and you need a wall, and you need some mats, and you need bodies. Nothing too complicated. <laughs> so if you have the heart and you have the courage, sometimes you don't even have the courage. The courage just shows up along the way. But if you have the heart to do this and to teach this from a uh, from empathy, from an empathetic standpoint, because we have to literally come empty. When you and yoga teacher training, you literally have to empty yourself of everything because you're teaching people how to do that, right? So you can't be a hypocrite. And so I just, I just, you just have to, for me, you just have the heart, the passion and want to do it. Yeah. Passion and heart so and purpose. You gotta come clean. So you gotta, you gotta come clean. Yeah. Yes, you have to. So what makes Luna Soul Yoga unique? Again, we offer yoga for everybody, and we stress body, <laughs> lowercase e v e r, capital B O D Y, <laughs> uh, and it's just a warm, homey feeling. We just want to do yoga here in this space. We don't want it to be about anything else but healing and yoga. Uh, and so our students are are feeling that. They feel like, okay, when I come in this space, I'm home. You know, it's uh, I'm not being judged. I'm in a space where I feel the love as soon as I walk in the door. And uh, my uniqueness is being embraced. And my body type is being embraced. And mm -hmm. that's what we, we offer here. Just a, a home feeling. And uh, we offer, again, the chair yoga. Mm -hmm. Yoga for kids, yoga in Espanol. So those are some of the things that set us apart from some of the other studios in the area. I love you all. <laughs> Coming, oh. coming, yeah. So prenatal yoga is coming. Yin yoga is coming. Okay. Um, okay. Which is holding poses for a long period of time. That's what yin yoga is, and uh, we're just really addressing the needs in the community. So whatever the community is asking for, we're going to bring it here to Lotus Soul Yoga. Thank you. Cool. Now, how can you tell that you had a successful class once it's done? When the, the students are like, "Woo, they got it!" <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to, you know, because one of my students said, you, you just like, I was mad at you in the beginning, but she's like, now, you know, I, I love it. And so, and they come back. When people come back, you know, you have a successful class. When your students come back, or they say, you know, I'm getting better, or you see the progress in front of your eyes, it's just amazing. Um, so, that's when you know. Or when you get the reviews and all that is amazing. But again, just seeing your student transform in front of your eyes and, and knowing what a difference yoga is making. It's, it's not me, I'm just the vessel. Mm. You've given a yoga class, I'm a guy. But you have to show up, you have to do the poses. I can't force you. Mm. And so when you see that, just and how it transmutes and how it transfers to each and every student, that's when you know you, you're doing your job. That's when you know you create a difference. Now, I always ask this before I end the interview. Um, Usually, artists I ask what artists would you like to, you know, have dinner with, dead or alive. For you, being a yoga teacher, mm -hmm. what or who, as a yoga teacher, would you like to have dinner with, dead or alive, and why? Wow, I would like to have dinner with Deepak Chopra. You know why? Because I started my meditation journey. So let me go back. I said a miscarriage led me to yoga. Meditation actually led me to yoga. Okay. And I did a 21 day meditation challenge with Deepak Chopra. He's still a, he's an amazing spiritual guru. And um, I just want to pick his brain. I want to know more. I want to explore the ins and outs of meditation because I'm here when it comes to meditation. I want to be up here. Gotcha. And who better to study than someone who you feel in your eyes is, is here and who has started you on this journey. 
So Deepak Chopra, if you are watching by any chance, my name is Heidi Harrison. I'm at 200 Jefferson Avenue, Linda, New Jersey. I would love to meet with you and to really rub elbows, give you a hug, and tell you how your magic education has changed my life. And I'm able to teach that to my students. So. Oh, that's beautiful, beautiful. But before we end this interview, is there anything you'd like to tell anybody, other entrepreneurs, you know, little nuggets that you'd like to give out? Don't give up. You're closer than you think. When you think you can't do it, you can. Because there's people out there waiting for you to succeed. They're waiting for you. They're, they're looking at you and they're saying, she did it, I can do it too. So stay committed. Surround yourself with people who see the greatness that you are. And just, just stick it out. And you don't have to have a plan. Mm -hmm. You know, just have action. Just have the have the, the power and the, the passion to be all that you're destined to be. And don't you dare surround yourself with, with people who don't see the greatness that you are. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you for that. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, Funk Studios, control the cool. On this episode of the Day in the Life of the Artist. Thank you, Adia Harrison. Much love and much appreciation. Peace and soul. Hadia Harrison, this is the day in the life of an artist.